Amen. Welcome to Sunday Night Broadcast. This is Dave Smeltz, His Word of Truth Ministries. I'm glad to have you tune in tonight. It's been a real blessing being here on Sunday night and on Wednesday night now with Back to the Scripture podcast. You like that song? I do. If you're saved, the angels can't sing that song, Amazing Grace. The song only angels can sing. Once was lost, but now I'm found. I see someone's coming in. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Amen. was lost, but now I'm found. Yes, praise God, hallelujah. Amen, praise God. If you enjoyed that, say it to yourself, say amen. <laughs> it's a great song, amen. Oh my, glad you're tuning in tonight. Uh, this is Dave Smeltz, and um, we, uh, we've we been busy. We had a terrible storm pass through today here, um, about an hour or so. Uh, we thought lightning had actually struck outside of our house. It was so loud, like a massive explosion. And we had the grandkids here, and the grandkids went, it hit, it hit, it hit the fifth wheel, it hit the fifth wheel. No, we didn't get to the fifth wheel. But uh, praise God, hallelujah. We are... Uh, we're excited that we're able to do this, and I hope that you've been enjoying the efforts that we've been making to do it. Uh, we're trying to just make it something that is uh, casual and something that people can tune into and enjoy. Uh, that's what this is all about, is teaching of God's Word. All these uh, different podcasts that I put on, we do convert them to YouTube, and they are on our channel at YouTube. So. If you ever want to go back, if you're at home and you uh, have a group of people come over, you can always turn YouTube on and, and how to listen to some of the things that we are sharing with you. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we're getting ready for our first debate uh, this coming Tuesday night, and uh, we need to pray about that, pray God's intervention. And then we also need to pray about the new uh, possible Supreme Court Justice. Um, she's going to be under a lot of fire. Um, I hate to think what she has to go through and what people are going to do to her. And um, I just, it just, uh, it really bothers me to think that people can be that cruel to an individual person. And I expect you're going to see some things uh, that will come out of this. You'll see some real people with real character. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing how far apart we are when it comes the Democrats and the Republicans. It's just amazing. And, you know, it's kind of like religion. There's different religions, and some of the religions are so far away from others. I mean, we're believers. We're Christians. But yet there are people that claim to be Christians that we're so far away when it comes to doctrinal questions that we can't even get close to one another. And it, used to, it never used to be that way, folks. Years past, as we go back, maybe 50, 75 years, 100 years back, 
I can honestly tell you, from what I know and from what my parents told me, things were much different. And now, we're just, uh, we're at one another's neck all the time. People walk around angry, people walk around all upset. It's a shame to see how people are. It's a shame when you watch the television set and you listen to what's taking place on there. Everybody's biting at one another. Look at St. Louis, what's going on in St. Louis. Look what's going on in different cities. You know, when you look at the situation in St. Louis, you have to ask yourself the question, were those policemen able to protect themselves? When they went into that room and the man shot him, what were they supposed to do? I had a talk with my grandson to, tonight. I, I'm going up to Virginia and I'm going to be marrying my grandson and his dear precious wife, Aunt Lisa. And I was talking to him, and he's, a, he's on the police force. And some of the things that this boy was telling me, this young man, that up in Virginia, the laws that they're trying to pass and want to break, it's going to be almost impossible for a policeman to stay on the force because they're going to be jeopardizing their family, their life, everything because of some of their rules. There is going to be, we're going to be a lawless nation, folks, if, if something doesn't happen in this election. We're going to be lawless. We're not going to have, there are going to be people running around and getting away with murdering one another. And killing. They're already doing it in Chicago. They're already doing it in New York. They're already doing it in some of the major cities in the country. Down here in Florida, there's not a day goes by that you don't hear about somebody in this state getting shot or somebody getting killed. Almost every single day we talk about the virus. But look at all the people that are being killed by, by, God, by someone shooting them. I mean, it's unreal. And the thing is, is the people that shoot, it's, it's not the gun, folks. It's the person behind the gun. They have to pull the trigger. The gun doesn't shoot by itself. Someone has to pull the trigger. And, and that's the thing. It's the people. The laws that we have are to protect us. But we, we have some characters out there. And we've got a lot of things coming up down the pike in the next few months and uh, well I'll tell you something this election is going to be a major thing it really is I think it's going to set the character of the United States of America for the future I really believe that I believe from talking to uh, my grandchildren and great grandchildren and other people I believe that people are really tired of hearing about the riots hearing about people call people racist. I think that they're tired of it. I don't think they want to hear it anymore. And I think as all this stuff continues to press on, I think all it's doing is, is just causing the fire to get bigger and bigger and bigger. They're putting candle on the fire by all the things that they're doing. And a lot of this is done by some really ungodly people that have no God whatsoever and don't even believe in God. And you know the interesting thing about it was, these people were voted into power. Um, my home state is Virginia. Virginia used to be a very conservative state. Uh, when I was uh, growing up, we'd go there for the summer months, and when I, I pastored there for many years, lived there for many years, it was a very conservative state. But because of the northern part of Virginia, which is right up the next to Washington, D.C., oh my goodness, that's where all the people are. It has turned totally, completely liberal. And I mean, the, the rules and regulations that are coming down are destroying people. What's happening in New York is destroying people. What's happening in Detroit, destroying people. What's happening in Minneapolis, it's destroying people. Lives are being turned upside down by all of this. And sooner or later, sooner or later, people are going to get, they're, they're, they're just going to get upset. If all the laws are stopped, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have like it was back in the, in the 1700s, uh, where the guys walk around town carrying guns and shoot one another, kill them. We're going back to, we're going back in time. We're not moving ahead. We need to really think about that. I want to show you something tonight that I thought was quite interesting. We've been studying in Revelation. We've been in Revelation chapter 9. Last week we, we're, into the, we're into the fifth seal. And uh, I want to pick up tonight 
in verse number 11. If you look with me there. Look with me in verse number 11. And they had a king over them, which is angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, half his name, Apollyon. Now, I spoke a little bit on this Wednesday night. We got into this. But tonight, I want to give you some interesting facts. This king will, a, will be the king of the locusts, demonic locusts. Now, when we start to think about the locusts, and I was thinking about this today, and I did some research, um, a lot of things in the Bible are symbolic. When we, we look at this, the, the size of these creatures and look at this, it's really pretty far out there. Notice what it says. There's four things that are said about him. He is the angel, a creature of enormous beauty and strength. He is the angel of the bottomless pit. Now I'm talking about this uh, fallen angel. And he was once an angel of heaven, a servant of God, but now he is an angel of the underworld of sin and evil and all ungodliness and unrighteousness. I want you to notice here that that's who Satan is. That's who he is. He's ungodly. He's not right. Then he is the king, the ruler, and governor over the bottomless pit. He's in charge of the bottomless pit. Don't forget, Jesus is going to take that away. Now, there are various levels of authority and power and rule in the spiritual world. But just as in this world, this fallen angel rules over the power of darkness. It's under his command and authority. It's so important to understand. I want you to notice this. A critical fact. The enemy of man is the spiritual force that lies behind this world. Listen to that. The enemy of man is that spiritual force that lies behind this world. A force that the Bible calls Satan. We, I believe with all my heart, we're under a satanic attack. I believe Satan is just, he's just having a heyday. Now only two things can happen because of that. One is, is God is giving him this opportunity to do what he's doing. Or, number two, the Lord is getting ready uh, to return. We only deceive ourselves if we do not cast ourselves upon the power and salvation of Jesus Christ. I think what's happening is a call to people to get saved, for their lives to be changed. This uh, wonderful march that went on in Washington on Saturday, I don't know how many people are there. Someone said over a million. But the thing about it was, is that the believers came together and they prayed and they sought God. And I, that that has something to say. Notice something about that uh, tremendous building. There was no demonstrations there. There was no people burning buildings or burning flags or burning, not that I know of. It was a peaceful thing. See, the difference between some of the demonstrations we see coming from the far right is those individuals, far left, is those individuals who are destroying buildings and destroying property and destroying everything. They're just out to do anything they can. Christ delivered us from the grip of this evil force and person. Christ delivered us when we got saved, we got delivered. Notice this. The very Son of God Himself was defeated, defeated Satan in order to deliver us to the grip of Satan in His power of sin. You see, Jesus died on the cross to keep Satan away from us. When one, anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and, ca and catcheth away that which was sworn in his heart, or sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth the seed by the wayside. See, there's many people that heard the Word of God, and maybe at some point they even believed it, but it never really took hold. The seed just didn't grab a hold. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will, ye will do. This is talking about Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it, John chapter 8, verse 44. Satan is the one that's doing all this. He's the ruler of darkness. What we're seeing is a total, complete attack by Satan. Not only here in America, but around the world. He's attacking everyone, folks. And we as individuals, we have to stand with God. We have to stay with the Lord. We have to pray more. We have to seek His face more. Hereafter, 
He says, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. John 14, 30. The Satan, Satan is, is, is controlling, folks. He's out there doing everything he can from all around. Oh, my friends, I hope you can see this. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world have blinded, who blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Now, friends, we have to, we have to stand on what we believe. And that means that the rest of those people out there doing all this stuff, we have to pray. We have to be solid within ourselves and realize that Jesus Christ is leading us. For we wrestle not, look at and listen to this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness of high places, Ephesians chapter 6, number 12. There is a, there is a spiritual demonic world out there, and the demons of hell some of these people, they look like demons. They really do. I mean, the way they got themselves all masked out, they look like demons. You know, someone asked me the other day, I said, Pastor, what would you do if you were sitting at the table with your wife and one of these so-called Antifa or Black Lives Matter came over and sat at your table and took your Coca-Cola and took it away from you? What would you do? I said, I know what I'd do. I said, what would you do? I said, I'd get up and knock his head off. What I'd do. He would, I'd hit him so fast he wouldn't know what it is. And you say, well, you're a girl. I'd hit him. I'd make, make an effort to, I guarantee him. I was in uh, Ukraine a couple of years ago with my wife. And uh, I was doing a class there. And we were staying in, it's kind of like it was a room, a rooming house. And uh, we went back from training one night. I was teaching that class. And there was a man standing at the door. And he said to me, he said, uh, money. Security, me security. You have to pay to get in. I said, I don't have to pay anything. First night I've ever seen you here. I said, uh, I'm not paying you any money. Oh, I asked. He said, You pay me money. You pay me money or you're sorry. Oh, no. I said, I'm not paying you any money. And he kind of pushed a little bit. My wife said, Uh oh. I plowed that guy down, knocked him clear down six or seven steps, and knocked him clear. I mean, I knocked Dickens out of him. And, I, and he, he ran. He ran. See, if you don't let people do stuff to you, you, you got to stand up for what's right. And if you say, turn the other cheek, well, you don't turn the cheek when someone's going to hurt you and someone's going to hurt somebody else. And having spoiled spiritual principalities and powers of the devil, he made, uh, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians chapter 2.15. The devil is constantly making a show. He's constantly getting out to people. He's, he's going after believers. He's going after, listen, he's going after the older people. I was talking to a man the other day about my age, and he was sitting there and he said, well, I can't do anything anymore. I just have to kind of take it. I said, when I get to that place, I'm going to ask God to take me home. Man, I, I believe that you are what you are, and you fight with everything you have. You have to. You have to do that. Because people are out there to devour you. And that's that's not ungodly, folks. There's nothing ungodly about that. That's the truth. Because we're supposed to stand up for what's right. We're supposed to make sure we let people know the truth. For as much as then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took a part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. And he delivered them who, who through fear of death were all in lifetime subjects to bondage. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 14 and 15. Jesus died on the cross for us. He put, he, listen, he could have come off that cross. He never stayed there. But he went there as a martyr, as a, as a, uh, for our salvation, as a lamb unto slaughter. He was, he was there, he had to do that. He was, he was a propitiation for our sins. Be sober, be diligent, be vil, diligent, 
because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let me read it again to you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, that's the one's against you, the devil, has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We have to make sure that we're vigilant, make sure that we're watching everything. We need to make sure that we're sober, that we're, we're able to make the right kind of decisions. And boy, we need to stand for what's right. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Oh, my friends, I hope that you can see what's happening here because it's so important to see it. Now, let me give you a thought about these locusts, because I think there's something to learn. I was looking at something tonight, and let's go back a minute to the description of the locusts back up here. Let's see, um, okay. The demonic locusts, all right, here we go. Uh, up in verses 7 through 10, the demonic locusts are like horses prepared for battle and ready to attack. I don't know if, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say this, but I was thinking tonight that these locusts come up and, and go to battle. Has anybody ever thought that they could be uh, symbolic of tanks, armored vehicles? I, I, I look tonight on the Russian army. Have you ever seen all the different tanks and stuff that they have? Have you ever seen what North Korea has? I mean, they have got tanks that do just about anything these motorized vehicles. The demon locusts will have heads that look like they are crowned with gold. That's talking about metal. This symbolizes that they will have authority. When you look at these tanks and you see the bulkiness of them and you see the gun power of them, you're thinking, wow, they got some authority. They're dangerous. Number three, Number three, the, demon, the demonic locust will appear to have the faces of men that symbolize the determination of intelligence of men. Have the faces of men. You ever think that these tanks, they represent a nation. They represent a nation. Some nation, United States of America, Russia. And, and that the people that are in there, a uh, matter of fact, they show that the drivers come up and see it. I, I mean, I'm speculating, folks. I'm speculating. Because I, when I look at the Bible, I know there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. And we don't understand all this. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom. But I have, I have a real feeling that these locusts that are coming, that's the armies. The armies of the world, the demonic forces. And that's what's going to be happening during the tribulation period. They're going to be trying to take over. The demonic locusts will have hair, this is the only question I had, have hair like the hair of a woman, beauty to seduce and ensnar, to help them seem innocent and harmless at first. This man, this may mean the long uh, of antennas to help them in their attack and escape. Long antennas. And we know that insects have long antennas. But it's hard for me to believe that this insect, which is supposed to be really, really large, is going to be all over the place. I know locusts are real because the Bible speaks of the locusts, even during Egypt. This could be symbolic of the, the antennas of the coming out of them, the communication that is there, uh, the communication that goes forth. The demonic locusts will have teeth as a lion. They will be ferocious, fierce, devouring, and, cr and cruel. Look at Joel 1 6 says. It says, For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and have the che have cheek teeth of a great lion. Notice what it says, for a nation. Nation. I believe that this could be all of the armory of, of Russia, and all the nations, China, and all of them, coming out for battle. I believe that's what this could be. Now, the demonic locust <coughs> will have teeth as a lion. Now, go down. The demonic locust will have a breastplate as of iron, indestructible, protected, and defended. 
the people will be helpless in killing them. When you look at tanks, you look at the armor, what they do is they build a large steel plate up underneath the belly. The reason why is IEDs and everything else, when they blow up, it can't come inside. That armor could be, it's really, a, when you look at this thing, it definitely could be. And if you ever saw all the different tanks and type of uh, stuff that, that Russia has, I watched the line, I watched the film on it. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing what they have. The demonic locusts will have wings that sound like many chariots rushing into battle. You know what that could be? That could be the roaring of the motors. That could be the roaring of the motors. Because when I when I was watching the film, you could hear the motors in the background. The loud motors, the rushing of wings. Frightening and overwhelming, there will be a sense of hopelessness in defending against them. Joel chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Look with me there. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and of, as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people sent in battle array. Could have flamethrowers in there. It could be these tanks with flamethrowers. We also note that there's a sting that comes out of the tail of these, of these locusts. That could be uh, the, the weapon tree uh, that's there, the 30 caliber, 50 caliber machine guns and everything that's on these things. There's a lot to look at here. But it's hard for me, like I said, and I'm, I'm telling you what I believe. The Lord showed this to me tonight, and I wanted to check it out. Demonic locusts will have a stinging tail like scorpions. Demonic torture. A stinging tail. Well, that could be like bullets firing out of the back of it and, and hitting people. I mean, think about it. Think about all this. It's so important when you think about uh, this whole thing about what God is trying to show us here in His Word. I am so excited for what God is doing. I hope you are too. Now, let's go ahead because I want to move up to the next chapter here. I want to get up into... Uh, here's where I want to get. I want to get up to the 6th chapter 9, verses 12 to 21. We'll see how far we can get. The blast of the 6th trumpet. Demonic like military horsemen. Wow. Wow. Look at verses 12 to 21, chapter 9. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. The sixth trumpet sounds, the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. These four angels, whatever these four things are, are going to, are going to kill one third of the world's population. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousands. 200,000 thousands. That's uh, 200 million. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them and having and having breastplate of fire and of jackneth and brimstone and the heads of the horses are as the heads of lions and out of their mouths uh, issued fire and smoke and brimstone uh, there's your flamethrowers there's your flamethrowers by these th three was a third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. They were shooting out. That's what a, a flamethrower shoots out fire. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents that had heads with them and they did hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented them they of their murders nor of their sorcery nor of their fornication nor of the of their thievery but listen even though all of this was coming at the people <coughs> even though it was coming they didn't repent you would think today as you look at people 
and see it. People look out and see what's going on in the world, all those riots and killings and everything else. You'd think more people would come to Jesus, wouldn't you? Amen? I believe you would. I think they would. I think more people would look to Christ because they say, wow, this is beyond me. People are afraid, folks. They're afraid. They're, they, they're afraid to stand up for anything. They're afraid to even say who they're going to vote for. They're afraid to stand because they're fearful that someone's going to do something to them. And that's understandable. I think this election is going to be another unique election. I believe that people, I give people in America a lot of credit. I don't, I, I don't put them down. I, I, even, I mean, if they're not saved, I love them and I want them to be saved. But I mean, the reality is this. I don't think the American people are stupid. I don't think so. And if they can't see through what all this is going down the pike and all these things that's happening, if they can't see for the last almost 12 years what's taken place in this country, if they can't see that, if they can't see how we've been in war and how all the things we've been through, and if they can't see how we reached a, a place in, in time here in the last three years that the economy was better and things were looking better, and all of a sudden, here comes this plague in here. Why does this plague come in? What's God trying to show us through this plague? Is that the demonic attack? Is that the demonic attack? Or it was, was, it, was it done by people in our own country? Maybe some of their own country were a part of the Chinese doing this. You know, for years, for years and years and years, they tried to blame the death of Kennedy on one guy. Come to find out later on, the proof was that people in the CIA had it killed. You see, let me tell you something, folks. We're dealing with some really wild and crooked people, whether you like it or not. They're there. And you, you have to understand, they're, they're out to devour you. They're out to get rid of you. That's why in this uh, upcoming debate tomorrow, Tuesday night, is important. And then under this new uh, uh, justice about what the Senate's going to do and how, they're, how this, uh, de uh, this demonic demons are going to attack her. God, please give her strength. God, help her to stand up against this, the lines of the devil. Help her, Lord God, because, man, she's going to need all the help she can get because the devil's coming on. This group, these demonic forces out of Washington, D.C., this demonic force is going to do everything it can. If you can't see that they're deep, listen, they stand up there and say they're religious. I watched them the other day at, at Gibbsburger's uh, funeral. I watched them do the, the sign of the cross, the Catholic sign. Most of them, a vast majority of them didn't even do it right. They didn't do it right. I was raised Catholic. They didn't do it right. They not. They just make it. Just trying to do something to show somebody. I'm telling you, folks. Listen. I thank God that I don't have to cross my body. I don't have to cross my head. I don't have to do any of that stuff. All I got to do is go to Jesus and say, "Lord Jesus, here I am," and He says, "I'm right here for you." But the life that he gives to you is a different one. I don't see how they can look in the mirror and look at themselves. I don't see how Biden, knowing what he's done, knowing what he did with Russia, knowing what his son did, and all that, I don't see how, and then he talks about his, his son that was a, a war hero, and then he, then he has another son that's, I don't know what, everything has been a mess. And then Biden was a part of it. I understand how people can, can play that kind of game and, and really do that. I don't understand that. We all make mistakes, but there's some people that really, really, really do some pretty evil things, and then don't admit it, and then don't. You know, if the Trump kids did half of what the Biden kids did, oh my, it'd be terrible. Because you see, that's the problem. The media, the media is out to destroy you and destroy your family. That's what it's all about, and we've got to do something and we have to pray and seek God and God has got to pull his action out to get rid of the media that's causing all this problem because it's all media someone asked me today why does, why does Trump Twitter I, I know why he twits because that's the only source whereby he can relieve himself from the pressures that are there and speak his peace the media is not going to help him there's nobody on that guy's side. I don't care who it is. You even go to Fox News. They're out to they're out to get him. Chris 
Chris is gonna is gonna go after him tomorrow on Tuesday night. I mean, th this is for this is for pay and for money and for ratings and stuff like that. This is not for God. It's not really for God. Some of you like that. I'm not saying all of them. But a lot of it all has to do with how much money they can make. What are their ratings? Because that's how they stay on the television set. That's how they, they, they pay their bills is getting the ratings. And who's getting who's getting all the false information? Who's getting all you and I? And half the people in America, a lot of them believe all this crap that comes across the airwaves. You can't believe it, friends. You can't. You got to check it out. You got to find out if it's true, because most of it's nothing but rhetoric, lies, no truth to it at all. And that's what the Bible says. It's going to get in the end times. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. You see, we've got so our programming is so bad, even with it. With the TV, the programming is terrible. I mean, so it's so promiscuous and awful. I mean, it's unreal. This 90-day fiance thing. I can't believe uh, someone. My wife said, "You want to see it? I want to." I had, man, I don't want to see that garbage. Man, I don't want to look at that. That's stupid stuff. Friends, I want to tell you something. It's a mess. It's really a mess. We have seen this in the first four trumpets. The blast that fell upon nature, horrifying and catastrophic events, destroying one third of vegetation, of the water supply, of sea life, of the shipping and fishing and commerce of the world. Scientists warn us all the time about the possibility of such horrors unless the environment is protected. Let me tell you something. God's in charge of the environment. Such a horrible time is coming. It is coming. It is coming. God is going to use every form of nature that you can imagine. But note in the first four trumpet judgments, man himself will not be afflicted. Afflicted. Not on a massive scale. That is, man's body will not be attacked. His body will not suffer any massive ill effects from the catastrophes. But after the natural disasters, the ungodly, the evil of the world will be judged. The last three trumpet judgments will be directed against them personally and millions will be afflicted, afflicted and destroyed. They are going to reap what they have sown. They have sown terrible ungodliness. Therefore they are to reap punishment of their evil. And the punishment is to be so severe it can only be called a prolonged period of woe. The last three trumpet judgments are the woe judgments, the judgments directed against the ungodly and evil of this world. The first woe judgment was seen in the former passage, the blast of the demonic like plague of locusts. The demonic locusts could only torture men, not kill them. Notice that, not kill them. But now the sixth trumpet blast forth in judgment and another horde of demons come forth. This time, however, there is a difference. These are military demons and they shall take their toll upon human life. An astronomical number of ungodly and evil of the world will die under the judgment of God's righteous hand in this woe judgment. This is the judgment of the demonic military horsemen, the fifth judgment, the fifth seal. My friends, let me tell you something. It's coming. It's definitely coming. When? I don't know, but it's definitely coming. Let's look at the first woe, nine, verse number 12. The woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more after that, hereafter. More woes lie ahead. There is to be a catastrophic destruction and devastation in the Great Tribulation that is coming upon the earth. It will be such, so terrible and such a terrible time that it can only be described as a period of woe. That is extreme grief. Now I thank God, folks, and you, if you're a believer, you ought to thank God tonight you won't be here for this because the rapture is going to take place and the church is out of here. But those that are lost will be left behind. The woe judgments of God are the trumpet judgments 
that zero in on afflicting the bodies of the ungodly. One woe has already been covered, the demonic like locusts. Two more woe judgments are yet to fall upon the evil people. Look with me now in verses 13 to 15. There are four angels set loose. Three facts are given about their being loose. Look at verses 13 to 15 with me now. And the six angels sounded and heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which it had in the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay one third part of man. To slay a third part of man. These are loosed by a command coming from the golden altar. This is the altar of incense where the prayer of God, of God's people are kept. This symbolizes a significant fact. God launches this judgment especially to vindicate the millions who will be slaughtered in the holocaust of the Antichrist. God is going to be perfectly just. God is fair. He is going to execute perfect justice against the Antichrist and his followers who have slaughtered millions. They too shall be slain by the judgment of God. They, their, their very prayers of the golden altar cry out for the name of God to be vindicated against those who laughed and mocked and rejected and denied and disbelieved and disobeyed and cursed God is going to hear these prayers. All these people that are making fun of the Christians all these people that are making fun of the prayers and making fun of what we're doing. They, let me tell you something. There are some awful people. They are going to stand before this judgment and they are going to be judged. And they're going to be remember. They're going to remember how the Christians were praying. <clears throat> how they were praying for them. Excuse me, I had to get a drink. I want you to notice the four released angels are bound at the great river Euphrates. This is definite, a definite article that we need to use. The four fallen angels are four specific angels. As well as being seen in a few moments, they will be four angels of high military rank. Why would angels come from the Euphrates? Scripture does not say, but two reasons seemed to be like. The head of the, of the spring of the Euphrates River flowed out of a garden of Eden. It was there, of course, where Satan first tempted and overthrew man. The first sin that resulted in the fallen human race took place at the head of the Euphrates River. It was also there that the first murder took place, and it was in the region of the Euphrates that the first organized rebellion against God took place. The Euphrates was the rest, western boundary of the promised land that God promised to Abraham. Therefore, beyond the Euphrates can be looked upon as the outer reach of the earth, as a place where the spiritual enemies of man are kept. William Bartley says, The angels therefore come from distant lands, from strange and ailing and hostile places, from these very parts of the world from which the Assyrians and the Babylonians had in a time past descended with the destruction upon Israel. So then the angels come from the quarter from which disaster had in an ancient time come upon God's people Israel. The four angels are angels of punishment. They come from the part of the world from which death and disaster and slavery had so over, over often came. The four fallen angels, number three, were loosed and they prepared to execute judgment upon the earth, the judgment of slaying one third of the ungodly and even population of the world. Remember, why? Because the billions upon the earth will follow and give their total allegiance and support to the Antichrist and the policies of his government. People, see, what, what, what's happening is when, when all of a sudden the world gets into such a bad shape, they're going to need somebody. 
and they're gonna and somebody's gonna pop up on the scene, this Antichrist, and he's gonna have all this knowledge, he's gonna be able to do it. He's he's Satan. And they're gonna follow him and they're gonna do anything he says. We're we're heading toward that right now. We're getting very, very close to that. One of the major policies will be the Holocaust launched against the believers of the world. Literally, millions will be slaughtered. Simply stated, God will not be able to take the diabolical evil of ungodly people anymore. He will allow his justice to finally be executed and demonstrated. The diabolical and the ungodly and evil shall reap the slaughter they have inflicted upon others. My friends, listen to me. This is coming. Note this fact. God has already set the time for this judgment. There is the exact year, month, and day, and even hour that his judgment is to fall upon the ungodly needle. The hour is already fixed. The hour is already We don't know it, but God knows it. God knows this. The hour is already fixed. There are military horsemen. There are demonic horsemen. There are five things that are spoken of about the demo demonic horsemen. There will be an army of 200 million Imagine an army of 200 million demonic spirits let loose upon the earth. This will be the army that of the four fallen angels will command an army such as the world has never seen before. This is, this is the demonic forces. The riders will have breastplates. The breastplates are fiery red and sapphire blue and sulfur yellow. The, uh, the breastplates symbolize that they will be indestructible protected and defended as they go to war against the ungodly of the world. Man will not be able to stop them. The horses will be horrible and add terror upon terror on the ungodly. They will have heads like lions, furious and fierce, devouring and cruel and consuming. They will have a mouth that spits out fire, a hellish and fire nature, a vengeful, angry and wrathful nature. They will be, they will kill one third of the ungodly and evil upon the earth. How? By the plague of fire. There's, remember I told you about the, the burners? The, the burners? The smoke and brimstone. Oh my, flamethrowers. I think flamethrowers are going to play a big part in this whole thing. But the, but the weapons used by the demonic army are not given. But observe how fire, smoke, and brimstone sounds like an atomic explosion. This is a great possibility. Can you imagine with the world fighting like it is, and you got you got North Korea, you got Russia, you got India, you got all these nations that have atomic bombs. All of a sudden, they push that red button, and all of those atomic bombs are over. Can you imagine with the destruction? Can you imagine what's going? I mean, listen, it's going to be horrendous. Thank God, I'm not be here for that. I hope you're not. I hope you're not. I hope that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your soul out of Him. We must, however, keep in mind that this slaughter is being masterminded by evil spirits and demonic forces, all being executed, watch here, under God's will as a judgment upon the ungodly and evil of the world. This is going to, listen, God is going to allow this to happen. He's going to make, this is his judgment to this world. This is his judgment to those that have refused him. This is his judgment to the blasphemers and all the other. The head, the head symbolizes intelligence. The power of the mouth and head and tail. The head symbolizes intelligence. The mouth symbolizes decept, deceptive speech and hunger to consume and destroy. And the serpent-like tail symbolizes poison strikes. And deadly wounds. Friends, horrendous. I mean, this is going to be horrendous. Can you imagine? And you know what? People today are just going about, they don't understand that God is coming through. Listen, they talk about global warming. Listen, God made this earth if you believe that. If you believe in creation, creationism, you don't have to worry about anything. God's in charge of this earth. He's only going to let it go so far. We can't destroy it. Only God can destroy it. That's the problem. Is the atheists, the people out there that are, uh, that have this 
ungodly way about them, they are talking about this global warming. Folks, let me tell you something. When God gets ready to warm this earth, he'll put out the sun brighter than you ever see. Listen, this this is I'm in here in Florida. It gets so hot down here. Some days I just can't wait to get back in the house. It gets so hot. I was in the Philippines. And, hey, the Philippines is hot. But I'll tell you something. The humidity and the heat down here in Florida, I believe it's worse than the Philippines. Worse than when I was in Vietnam. It's hot. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when all this war breaks loose. All these things are going to happen. I can't imagine. It's going to be awful, folks. Be beyond our imagination. The picture of the Great Tribulation is a picture of horror heaped upon horror. One horror after another. It is frightful. It is a fearful scene. But we need to note, with what we know about the possibilities of atomic destruction, environmental devastation, and the possibility of some monstrous gene mutation, the judgment of God's book can no longer be doubted. We know that these things can happen. We know that God can do this. If God is really God, and if not, He is truly, if not, He is truly just. None of some di diabolical leader arises, <coughs> as they have in the past, who launches a holocaust against God's people. God is bound to execute justice if some demon or personal slaughter me of uh, wants to slaughter millions and millions of people and if the whole world gives its support it is true that will this will cause the Antichrist to differ from all former world leaders who have killed millions they had only limited support but in this last days this Antichrist will have the support of the most ungodly and evil people of the earth they will totally get behind them. We're seeing that today in the streets. We're seeing how these these kids are getting behind this Black Lives Matter and Antifa. These are terrorist groups, folks. These are downright terrorist groups. They're, they're not, that's not logical protesting. That's terror. They're sending terror throughout the streets. I mean, they are doing this and, and people are calling it, it's okay. It's not okay. When, when we look at our Constitution, there was one thing about uh, protesting, but that was peaceful. People can express, but getting out and getting up in people's face, pointing in their face, and then kicking them and hitting them, burning buildings and doing all of them, that's not of God. And that's not what our Constitution says either. Wake up. Wake up, folks. Because let me tell you something, and I really believe this. And I may be wrong. I don't think I am. I believe the Democrats are totally 100% behind all this. I believe the George Soros and the billionaires around the world have got so much money they're putting money in. Listen, never in our history have we had so many billionaires getting involved in politics. I have to say one thing about Donald Trump. He's never taken a paycheck. Never taken one cent. Not one penny has he and folks, let me tell you something. Most of them go up there and that's all they want. That's what it's all about. It's all about money. It's all about control. It's all about power. Friends, we got to really get on our knees and really pray. We have to really seek God because we got a lot going on. Tuesday night is the debates. Wednesday, the Senate meets in the situation with uh, the past uh, state attorney and all that's coming up there's so many things coming down the pipe these are all things that are giving us insight into what the future may be in our country let me tell you something folks you better think about who you're voting for too because I want to tell you and I honestly say this with all my heart and I hope you don't get that at me if you're voting for a Democrat you're just voting for Satan that's all you do whether they are good people or bad people, that's because you're voting for Satan. Because Satan is using them to accomplish his task. Whether they know that or not, I don't know. But Satan is using them. And right now he's having a heyday in the lives of people. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God, for the word of God. 
I pray that I've helped some tonight a little bit, or I've tried, to understand that there's coming a time, there's coming a day when judgment is coming. And judgment is coming to this earth for its refusal to accept you, to accept Jesus, the Savior of the world. Dear God, help us. Help us to see the light. Let our eyes be open. Let our hearts be open to the truth. For the truth will set people free. Now, Father, if there's one that's listening, that's not saved, I pray they will pray this sinner's prayer. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I am. But tonight, Lord, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you can save me. I believe you can give me life eternal. And Lord Jesus, tonight I ask you to save me and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me know if you make a decision for Christ. I'd love to have a share with me. Listen, folks, until Wednesday night, God bless you, folks. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. <laughs>